Good day everyone. Check out what I scored at a yard sale today. This is a Panasonic Omnivision model PV-V4612-K VHS VCR made in 2002. I got this for three dollars which I think is a pretty darn good price. Uh, this particular series of VCRs that Panasonic made in the early 2000s and I think the late 90s too um, based on what I've read, these particular VCRs are perhaps the best uh, built VCRs of the 21st century. But the biggest reason I bought this thing was this. Look at this. Not only is this a four head VCR, but it is stereo. Four head hi-fi stereo. That is absolutely awesome. I have never owned a four head stereo VCR. I think Mum and I, I think we've had one or two four head VCRs, but both of them would have been mono. And of course they were cheap Chinese crap that broke in a year. This VCR is the real deal. Four head stereo. I was so happy when I saw this thing. Three dollars. Can't go wrong with that. There were two other VCRs there. An Emerson and a General Electric. Both two head mono. Guy told me he'd give both of those VCRs for another three dollars. But I said nah that's okay. I did not get a remote with this. Which is a shame because as you might be able to see most of the functions require the remote to operate but uh... hopefully assuming this VCR works I have not even plugged this in yet to try it but hopefully if this VCR works I should be able to find a remote for it these VCRs took uh... a very common Panasonic remote what was called the light tower remote it's a nice remote and uh... perhaps I can get a universal remote to work with this too but I have not even tried this in yet let's take a closer look at this thing. Physically it's quite a wide VCR. A bit wider than what you'd find on a VCR of this era. You got the power button. Commercial Advance. Apparently this thing's capable of uh, automatically going through commercials. This Movie Advance. I don't know what that means. Stereo. AV input. That's awesome. Channel up and down. Evidently this has a cable tuner. How's it looking there? Uh, nothing looks out of place. Oh, vacuum fluorescent display. This thing would have a lot of on-screen stuff, I imagine. Record button, eject button, your standard play controls. VCR plus plus. Not sure what that is. Energy star. Let's take a look at the back here. It's very light. It's a uh, well, it's metal up here, but the rest of the VCR, even the bottom, is made of plastic. So physically, kind of cheap in construction, but again, I have heard really good things about these particular VCRs. Here's a model number, made March the 3rd, 2002, made in Indonesia. That also kind of grosses me out, but uh, I'm going to cross my fingers that this is a good VCR. <laughs> Assuming it works, I haven't even tried it yet. AV stereo output and another input, coax antenna in or cable in and TV out. Alright, I have not tried this thing at all. I have no idea what to expect. Let's uh, plug it in and see what we get. Probably not the smartest thing to do this on a bed, but uh, we'll take our chances. And, oh, it's not even a vacuum fluorescent display. It's a dinky little LED display. Oh well, that's alright. Uh, okay, do we have power? We certainly do. Looking good so far. Alright, what I'm going to do is hook up the other camcorder to the AV output and see if we can play a tape. Alright, got the other camcorder hooked up and running here. If we turn the VCR off and back on, there says the channel there, so we are getting video out, uh, output. Let me grab a tape. This is a tape I grabbed from the thrift store. It just has random stuff on it, so let's see if this works. Okay, that's not good. That wasn't a good start. It uh, didn't load the tape, or it didn't bring in the tape all the way. I don't know if it's in now or not. I'll take my chance. Let's hit play and see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay. It uh, it works. It does play. 
fast forward. Yeah. Oh, we got fast. We got fast fast forward like uh, my Citizen VCR. Let's try rewind. Yeah, that's working. Fast rewind. Stop. Okay, it uh, it is working. Let's try fast forward. Yeah, that works. Rewind. I like uh, the display there. I like how it says hi fi too. Yeah, that works. Let's try eject. Eject works. Okay, uh, it's passed so far. The only thing it failed at was actually putting in the tape the very first step. So let's try that again. Well, it was kind of lethargic, but it did it that time. We are going to open this thing up in this video, and I'll check out what's going on there. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's rewind the tape all the way. We are going to make a recording. I'm going to hook this camcorder up to the video input. Hopefully I can switch to said video input. Hopefully it's already on it. And uh, we'll make a recording on the VHS. Okay, hopefully this is working. Um, I was able to switch to the line input with the channel button, so I switched to line 1, I think that's right. But uh, we are now recording on the Panasonic model PV-V4612-K 4-head Hi-Fi Stereo VCR from 2002. Hopefully this works, because uh, if it does, man, what a nice VCR, 4-head stereo. I assume that we're recording in SP mode, I cannot change the speed because that would have to be done on the remote. But uh, this is what it looks like anyhow. Everything sounds good. Let's press and record do again. Oh, timer record. Evidently it shows the uh, length of time on the, dis on the uh, TV screen. But uh, presumably it is working. It looks promising. It got off to a not promising start, but it is promising so far after that. So I will cut it off here and we'll see how that looks. Wow, um, I've not looked at that footage on the computer yet. I've only seen it on the camcorder, but that looked and sounded really good. Uh, this pleases me so far. This sings off after that uh, little mishap of inserting the tape this thing's off to a really great start so let's eject and let's open this thing up two screws on the back and the cover lifts off and uh, hear what's inside it here here's what's inside it bit of a grammar flub there uh, interestingly not as wide the case itself is wider than the actual circuit board they made uh, a ton of models uh, under this chassis so it's quite possible that the older units had a wider circuit board. We've got a switching power supply. There's the head drum. Everything's much simpler than, for example, uh, my uh, RCA VCR, which is from the late 80s. Now, let's see what it looks like when we put in that tape. Huh, blows the tape really fast. That's weird. It doesn't seem to be any belts involved with loading the tape. It's all gear drive. Let's see that again. You know what? I think it just needed a little bit of uh, needed a bit of exercise just to get it going. Perhaps that perhaps this thing hasn't been used in years, and that's why it got stuck the first time. Yeah, everything looks good so far. Caution: hot circuit, and it doesn't mean temperature. Ooh, yeah. Let's play. And we playing. Good.
and eject. Okay. See, it's got that track there that the uh, loading, the tape loading mechanism goes by, so perhaps it just had to work some grease through that. I put the tape in now. Yeah, it's working a lot better now. I was going to say, I wonder if you can open up the bottom to uh, get to the uh, belts, but I'm wondering if this thing even has any belts. Surely it must have at least one or two. I don't know if the bottom comes apart. I'll have to take a look at this and figure it out. I was able to take the front control panel off just a couple of clips. Get a good look at that display there. Certainly not much on it. Yeah, there's no holes in the circuit board. I do see one belt right there, and I believe that's the main cap stand. This is probably one of those things where you have to uh, you have to remove the entire circuit board to get to the uh, or no not the circuit board you have to remove this mechanism to get to the belts and uh, that really displeases me although I have no I have no wish to uh, remove this mechanism right now. Well after I removed the front panel cover uh, this thing just would not load a tape anymore. So by some act of God, I was able to at least partially remove the deck. And uh, I haven't been able to get it out, but I can lift it up just enough to see that there is but one belt. That's the cap capstan belt, and it's in excellent shape. So I ain't even going to bother toying there anymore. I don't think a belt is the reason this thing's having loading problems. So I'll keep digging. Well, this frustrates me. It just doesn't seem to want to load anymore. I've determined that uh, this motor right here, in addition to serving the action of loading the tape around the heads, it also does the actions of inserting and ejecting the tape. And it does that through these series of gears here, which uh, in turn run that gear and uh, load in the tape. But uh, the tape just does not want to load anymore. I don't know why. If you try to put it in, It'll try and insert it partially, but then you got to push down on it physically to get it in all the way. And of course now it's loaded wrong. So, yeah, I don't know why. I'd like to think that it uh, just needs to be lubricated. But I can't imagine that because you need to physically shove downwards on the tape. And I would think, you know, with a fair bit of force, and I wouldn't think that a simple lubrication could fix a problem that bad. So I don't know what's up with this. Other than that, hopefully I can get that working, because otherwise this seems like a very promising VCR. So, uh, we'll cross our fingers and hope, I guess. Wow, that turned out to be one of the most frustrating things I've ever tried to do in my entire life. It's about a month later, and I'm just going to come out and explain what happened after I last put the camera down with regards to this video. I uh, lifted off the deck from the VCR, examined the one belt, which was fine, and uh, what I did was I started turning, you know, VCR decks made out of several gears and wheels and stuff, I just started turning them around uh, to, lo to look at all the gears and see if there was any broken teeth or anything and uh, see if I could find any broken linkages or anything like that. So I did that, and that was all fine and dandy. I put the deck back on the VCR, and I plugged the VCR in, and when I plugged it in, the supply reel of the VCR started ramping up to full speed as if it was rewinding a tape, but there wasn't even a tape in it. And when it started doing that, I unplugged the VCR, and I plugged it back in, and that was it. It never worked ever again. It wouldn't even turn on. It, the VCR would go into standby normally when you plugged it in, but any time you tried to turn it on, it would come on for a few seconds, and then uh, it would turn back off. I never got anything more than that out of that VCR ever again. Uh, the only thing I can guess is turning the wheels like I did put something out of alignment, be it a cam or a rotary encoder or something, I don't know. But uh, I, for all intents and purposes, electronically destroyed that VCR. It never worked again. 
I spent a couple hours fiddling with it some more trying to get it to work. It frustrated the heck out of me and eventually I just tore the thing apart. All I saved from it was the LED display which I probably won't do anything with and the power cord which I know I can do stuff with and I just threw the thing away. I'm really disappointed in myself even though it was probably an honest mistake. I didn't know that turning the gears and stuff uh, like I did would screw the VCR up so badly but uh what can you do? Part of me wishes that I'd never touched it at all because at least in its original state it still half worked but another part of me is glad that I've done that and so I can get rid of it because if I hadn't have done that and the VCR was still in its original state I would probably never uh, be able to fix it and I would forever have a VCR that had problems loading the tape and I wouldn't have the heart to throw it away because it still mostly worked but now that I've done what I did I can just completely chuck it no question that it'll ever work again but yeah I'm glad I paid only three dollars for it it still disappoints me nonetheless uh, even though it's just three dollars I actually put the thing on eBay for parts or repair uh, just to see if I could get anything, I had it on. I had it listed on eBay for three weeks. It was the cheapest Panasonic VCR on the American eBay, and it hardly got any views, let alone any watchers or bids. So that certainly went out the window. All I did was try to see if I could make my three bucks back, but uh, even no one on eBay wanted it. Now, from what I've read, a VCR turning itself off after turning on is a safety mechanism when it thinks a tape is jammed in it so uh, that's probably what happened my turning of the gears and wheels and stuff uh, put the VCR into a mode in which a tape would be in it but a tape wasn't in it and it screwed all the electronics up and it just said hey there must be a jam tape and that's all it would do but uh, other than that you know when it turned when it did turn on for the few seconds there was video output and the display lit up and everything but uh, man, that was so, I, I screwed it up so badly by doing that. But yeah, it's already gone. It went in the trash uh, this morning. So, uh, good riddance. Now, luckily, my uh, experience uh, has not turned me against these particular VCRs. Um, I believe I just had a bad egg between it being made in Indonesia and perhaps it was well used, but... I believe mine was not representative of the quality of these VCRs. I do believe that uh, these VCRs uh, were the uh, best ones of, of their time. Uh, now with that being said, uh, in the uh, early to mid 2000s when these particular VCRs were still being made, indeed most VCRs were crap. So even though they were the best of their time, uh, that probably means they were still slightly crappy, but they were good enough to be the best of their time. So I've been doing quite a bit of research, researching about, you know, because they made so many models based on the same chassis over such a long time frame. And I wanted to find out, you know, when the particular chassis was introduced and discontinued and the changes they made over the years and all that sort of stuff. Well, I've looked at a bunch of them on eBay, probably like <laughs> over a hundred. And from what I can tell, Panasonic VCRs, based on that particular chassis, was introdu were introduced in 1993. And uh, they looked like that. That's what the earliest of these uh, particular VCRs looked like. And you can distinguish the earliest ones, because the blue bar is uh, in the middle of the tape door here. On later ones, it would be moved to the bottom. And so VCRs based on this particular design were made from about 1993 to 1995. In 1995, uh, most models received a slight upgrade and you can see they moved the blue bar to the bottom and this design was used on most models from 1995 to 1997 and then uh, in 1997 most models had a design like this you can see they kind of uh, updated the design of the front panel made it you know curvy and more streamlined looking and that lasted for most models until about 1999 when most models began to look like this. Roughly the same, except now uh, the tape control buttons are arranged in a circle, and this lasted for most models until about 2002. And then in 2002, we get to this design. You can see there that uh, they ditched the circular button arrangement, 
and now the buttons are more plainly placed in a boomerang shaped indent and the power button has another boomerang shaped indent this was the design that my unit uh, had and this was used from 2002 to 2003 for most models and then in 2003 they made the biggest change they turned silver and that's no good I'm sure most of you as well as me know that a silver colored VCR is probably not a decent VCR but indeed in 2003 uh, most models uh, became silver colored other than that the design uh, remained mainly the same and this design this chassis was completely ditched in 2005 they went to an all new design uh, other information I found let me see I got a whole list of information here uh, the first Indonesian made units uh, came out in 1998 and the last Japanese made units were made in 2000 as for the VFD versus LED display uh, the first LED display equipped units came out in 2001 and the last vacuum fluorescent display equipped units came out in 2000 and I haven't confirmed this yet but I would bet that the Japanese units were made with VFD displays and the Indonesian made units were made with LED displays now most of these that you'll come across are forehead stereo but they did make forehead mono units such as this one here and you can tell because it says it just says forehead omnivision it doesn't say stereo and they also made two head mono units like this one and it just says plain omnivision on it nothing else to advertise and uh, that's pretty much it these are so there's so many of these on ebay there's over a thousand of these on ebay at any one time on on all in all sorts of price ranges very easy to get one most of them uh, that I've looked at uh, are listed as tested and working good. And uh, if you so wish, Panasonic also made some uh, high-end units with special features. Some of them, like this one, came with what Panasonic called the Dynamorphous Metal Head. Uh, indeed, while normal uh, VCR heads are made of uh, ferret, VCRs equipped with the Dynamorphous Metal Head uh, had heads that were made not of ferret but out of uh, several metal, metal alloys and uh, the point of that was to uh, increase the signal quality between the heads and the tape thus giving you better playback quality and better recording quality so uh, and there's plenty of these too so if you want a higher end unit with the dynamorphous metal head you can certainly get one I'm not sure if they made them past the turn of the century but they did make them uh, in the early days from the mid to late 90s and then finally Panasonic actually made consumer level units that were capable of super VHS which I didn't know that I thought they only made uh, prosumer uh, super VHS units but indeed they did make them uh, they did make consumer grade super VHS VCR so that's really cool and finally highest end of them all they did make super VHS units with the dynamorphous metal head so uh you got all the bells and whistles if you so wished. Moved inside now because the bugs started eating me, but I get a load of this. For the past hour or so, I looked up probably close to 50 different models of Panasonic VCR that are and were sold on Amazon.com. And uh, I looked at all the uh, ratings, you know, the out of five stars. And uh, I looked up every model that was sold and... Uh, recorded its uh, its star rating and uh, and where it was made and the results I found were not surprising although I was slightly surprised at how very well correlated uh, they were take a look at this out of all the Panasonic VCRs on Amazon.com a hundred percent of those rated between one and a half and two and a half stars were made in Indonesia and one of the models rated at 2.0 stars was the same model that was featured in this video and surprise surprise tons of people uh, spoke about problems loading tapes well how about that uh, get a load of this out of VCRs rated 3 stars 86% made in Indonesia 14% in Japan 3.5 stars 60% made in Japan 4 stars 83% made in Japan and out of all out of VCRs rated four and a half and five stars, a hundred percent of them were made in Japan. 
I don't think there's any uh, magic or trickery going on here. Uh, the data speaks for itself. The reliability and therefore the rating of Panasonic VCRs is very strongly correlated with where they were manufactured. And uh, it is very clear looking at this that the Japanese units are definitely higher quality than the units made in Indonesia. So uh, that's about it. So what am I going to do? I don't have my unit anymore. It uh, basically blew up and now it's part of the landfill. I think when Christmas comes around, I'm going to get another one on eBay. Because I really want a 4-head stereo VCR. I do not get uh, to go to thrift stores enough. Uh, the local ones here, uh, I've never found a VCR. And the ones farther away, I only get to like a couple of times a year. Uh, when I was in Machias, Maine, one of the thrift stores I visited, uh, they did have a 4-head stereo VCR, but it was a cheap Funai built unit from the mid or late 2000s. I said, screw it, I wasn't going to get it. But I want to try another Panasonic unit. My grandfather has one, and uh, I don't think he's used it for several years, and it's actually made in Japan. It actually has a big sticker on it right on the front, big proud-looking sticker saying made in Japan, and he hasn't used it for several years. But uh, I'm weary of asking him if I could have it or buy it off him just because I know he still does occasionally use a VCR and he might use that one. I don't know. So I might or might not inquire about that one. But uh, if I don't, what I, what I think I'm going to do when Christmas comes around is uh, get another one on eBay. I'm definitely going to get a four head stereo unit. I may, uh, depending on the price range, I may get one with the Dynamorphous metal heads. Um, if I come across uh, one of the right price, I might even get a Super VHS unit. That would be pretty cool. Although, that's only if I come across one with the right price, because I have no Super VHS tapes, and I have no interest in exploring Super VHS. But, uh, definitely forehead stereo, and uh, very likely one with Dynamorphous heads. And uh, we'll see when the Christmas season comes around. Well, there you go. That was my follies with a junk Panasonic forehead stereo VCR and some subsequent research I've done about them. Hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.